All right. So Tyra Banks. Oh, Smi- yeah. Smize. What did she say? Smize. Smile with your eyes. Right. Uh, smile with your eyes. Yeah. I think that was did her thing like on Project Runway. Wait. What did eyes. she do? No. Model. Uh, best top model. Top next, America's wow. Next top model. America's Next Top Model. Yes. I am okay. really up on my Tyra Banks fucking trivia. I know so much about her. <laughs> um, so Sweeps Week is a thing for people watching this if they don't know what that is. Okay. It's – and I don't know if it's still such a prevalent thing just because the way uh, television has changed mm-hmm. and we have streaming services and all this. So mm-hmm. it's like a constant feeding of the machine right. in terms of content. But before all of these things were as big as they are now, Sweeps Week in TV, I think it happens maybe twice a year or four times a year, I forget. It's when the producers of shows are on an absolute edge – to get the best and highest ratings they possibly can. Okay. And, like, their jobs depend on it, right? Mm-hmm. So somebody – I've never heard of this before, and I, I'm so stupid that I literally thought you were talking about, like, a sweepstakes. Like, that, yeah, I don't every, know that every year people do, like, a big – like, Oprah does with the, like, look under your <laughs> chair and everyone gets a car. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no. Just like, let me just broadcast my I actually my don't know ignorance. why they call it that either, like – it's probably going no to sweep clue. the ratings, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, sorry, go on. So somebody had read an article that I did um, and said, like, oh, we should get this girl on. Mm-hmm. And I spent – I don't, and I had also done, like, some other primetime sort of sensationalized interviews, I things like I think you like did, this. like, Inside Edition. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I did yeah. that, too, once. Um. And they said, okay, we should get this girl on. And they spend time with you before. Mm -hmm. It's really psychological. Yeah. It's incredibly psychological. They get you to trust them? No, they want, like, informational. They're just, like, as a good journalist would, but they, in this case, and in some cases, just to use it against you, Mm. to try and prepare themselves. Like, they'll prepare themselves, but you're not allowed to prepare. Right. So, God forbid, I would ever ask for questions. Right. 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 Um, so I spent time with them before leading up to it. Um, I think we shot some like random B-roll footage for them to use. I think they came on set. They did a fake thing in their own wardrobe room where we film like as if I was getting ready to go do a scene, Mm -hmm. um, with makeup artists that are not even in the business. Mm Um, and the day of everything was stalled. So it's like, you need to be there at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Not knowing the show doesn't film till like, I don't remember, between 12 and 2. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why is it necessary? Then they isolate you. Mm-hmm. They isolated me. Um, oh my God, it I sounds had like an interrogation. Three people. It, it is like, a, it's a psychological interrogation, 100%. I had three people with me. And they separated us. And I came with a shirt. Uh... I came with a shirt that I did, like, iron-on letters. It said, Tuva bien. Mm-hmm. Like, everything's all right. Yeah. And they said, okay, we're going to wardrobe now. I said, I'm in my wardrobe. What do you mean? Like, no, no, we have wardrobe for you. So they, then they take you to wardrobe. They dress me in a pinker than pink than this top, which, like, it's Especially so, that is so, so not color. Yeah, yeah, so my color. <laughs> they put me in these like really terrible jeans with hush puppies. And hush puppies are like those really ugly brown ballet flats. I haven't heard that name, hush puppies, in like 10 years. It's the thing, right? And oh my God. they even made me take my earrings out. They straightened my hair and slicked it back so much like to make me look young. Like, yeah. this is the whole thing. Like, make her look as oh. innocent as possible. Make her look confused. Yeah. And this, I would say, I'd done some big interviews. I already had a distrust at this point. Mm-hmm. But I still didn't have the balls to stand up for myself. Like, right. if that was today, that would that would never happen. And it has happened where people are like, you can't wear that. I'm like, yeah, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... No, absolutely not. Right. Um, or people want to dress me in certain things for photo shoots. I'm like, no, that's not me. Like, I don't yeah. want to wear that. Right. Um, anyways, uh, so it's it's a complete psychological process. She never came out and introduced herself beforehand. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's normal 
on talk shows or not. Yeah. Um, I thought it was weird at the time, at least. I still think it's weird. Um, separated me from the three people that I brought with me. The one funny thing is I requested banana Laffy Taffy's in my, cause they were like, do you have a writer? And I was like, no, <laughs> I, I just like banana Laffy Taffy. And I, it was a joke and they actually yeah. did it. It's like, Oh, one thing they did. That was kind. Um, and then we get on set. Oh, the last thing about the wardrobe is that I said, I'm not wearing these shoes. I actually did say that. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm not, I, I can't wear these shoes. These are terrible. And, they said, oh, we're, the camera's not going to see him, though, so it's no big deal. Uh, like, why did I believe this? I don't why, know. You know what I mean? Because you want to like, inherently okay. believe that people aren't full of shit. And these are wardrobe people. But yeah. then the producer's standing, standing by and looking at everything. And, like, I've been on other talk shows since then, and it doesn't go down like this. Mm-hmm. So all, all definitely planned and put together. And then uh, when we're actually filming, um, I look up and realize, like, oh— there's five cameras from mm-hmm. every direction, mm-hmm. from every angle. So, of course, they're going to see the full thing, right? The she comes puppies. out. Yeah, the hush puppies. <laughs> <It's> no, <laughs> destroying, no, my, destroying my image. <laughs> <laughs> she comes out dressed like a school madam. Oh, yeah. Like, the whole thing is set up. You know wow. what I mean? And even if the public doesn't recognize these things, like yeah. – Subconsciously, they do. Like, yeah. you're taking that in, and it's going to affect the way you're viewing this thing. Of course. Um, at certain points during the interview, she did. She was stumped. I stumped her multiple times. Multiple times. And she would say, I am so emotional right now. We're going to have to pause and take a quick break. And there's, like, 30 people in the background. Right. Producers, PAs, all these people. And they would run over and say, okay. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. And they did get me with one line. Like, I don't remember what it was. If I went back and watched, I would remember the moment. But they did get me to, like, they feed you lines, right? And they right. were trying to do that. And I think something just might have snapped in me where I was like, I was like yeah, I'm going to use that one. But mm-hmm. they told her what to say in reply. Like, So, I mean, all of these things are set up. Um, and then the end result, what do they do? They pair me up with um, this sort of non-sex positive feminist. We would call them a swap now, sex exclusionary. Oh, there's a term. Oh, there's a whole term for it. It's a, yeah, like sex worker exclusionary, no, swerf, sex worker exclusionary radical feminist. Okay, exactly. These, these people. Um, She, I think, did like four porn scenes. Mm-hmm. And somehow had an authority to speak. Do you remember her name? No. She was – I was 18 when I did the show, and I think she was in her 30s at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they brought on a 15-year-old 15 year streetwalker prostitute. And this is a narrative that they try to yeah. tell. Yeah, That of course. We're, we're all the same. We all come from the same background. It's evil. It's bad. They're damaged. Mm-hmm. And so then – the girl, the older woman served as the uh, the person that was trying to warn me. And then the younger girl was just there as a shock factor. So that was the whole, how the whole thing went down. And I did, I remember I did like a YouTube vlog about it afterwards. Like the magic of editing, they cut, because they have five cameras. Right. All they have to do is cut to me listening. Mm-hmm. And therefore I have no response to her questions. Like the power of right. editing. Yeah. And so, and a lot of it, I just looked silent. But luckily uh, one of the people that I brought there was Peter Warren. Ah. And Peter Warren actually, like, wrote... So Peter uh, Warren is, like, uh, I don't know, what's his role? He's a, he's an AVN. He's yeah. He's a head editor or something like that. So anyways, just yeah. for the general public doesn't know who he is. And um, I think he had actually asked me, like, I told him I was going on, and he actually asked me, can I shadow you or something like this? And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, why not? And, like, thankfully, he was there because he actually watched the entire thing as it went down. And... um. And he wrote about it afterwards, like just saying how twisted and manipulative mm-hmm. the entire thing was. And I did a vlog about it, but yeah, it exists. It's there. Um, it happened. Yeah, I, I mean, what you gonna do? But it's still, it, you know, that old saying, like no, pre- no, there's no such thing as bad press. I do think there is, but yeah. like in that case, 
Would I do it again? Yes, I would still do it again. <laughs> yeah? I would still do it again. Yeah. Would you do anything differently? Oh, for sure. Like, I wouldn't have You wouldn't wear those that, hush puppies. I uh, wouldn't have worn the hush puppies. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that line that they fed me. Right. You know what I mean? Do you don't remember what it was? No, it was something really reactionary, though, and yeah. that's just not my style. Right. Um, typically. But that's got to be so frustrating, and this is why so many people in the adult industry are so wary of mainstream coverage because they oh, come yeah. in with an agenda. Oh yeah, and they really want you to fit into this, you know, preconceived notion that they have of yep. you and the industry, and they'll find like whatever way that they can to make you look whatever way they want you to look. Right, and it's really irritating. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.